Hey guys, recently Alibaba released their latest image editing model called QN Image Edit. With this model, we can do a lot of editing tasks, for example, adding or removing objects, changing backgrounds, photo retouching, transforming images to various art styles, restoring old photos, and editing or adding English or Chinese text to photos. So, let's see where we can download the model and how to use it in Comfy UI. The download links I'm using here are in the description, and also don't forget to update your Comfy UI. So, let's get started. First, let's see where we can download the QN Image Edit model. Let's open this link in the browser. Here we go. In here, we have two formats of QN Image Edit. One is BF16 and other is FP8, so if your computer can run BF16, then download the BF16 format of QN Image Edit. If not, use FP8 format of QN Image Edit. And if you cannot run both formats, then you can try other quantized formats of QN Image Edit comes as GGUF. So let's see where we can get those formats. So let's open this link in the browser. Here we go. If we scroll down, we can see a lot of quantized models. I personally like Q4KM. The one I don't suggest is Q2K, which generates poor quality images, but you can try it if you want. You should also try every other model to see how it performs. Later in this video, I will show you how to use the GGUF models. Next, we need a text encoder, which is QN2.5VL7B. If you've already used the QN image model, you might already have one. If not, let's see where we can download it. Let's open this link in the browser. Here, we have the BF16 format and also the FP8 scaled format. If your computer can run the BF16 format, try that. If not, try the FP8 scaled. If you can't run either of them, there are other quantized GGUF models of this encoder. So, let's see those. Let's open this link in the browser. Here we go. Here, we can find a lot of quantized models of the text encoder. You can start by trying Q2K, but sometimes it gives poor results. I personally prefer to use Q6K, which uses less memory than the FP8 scaled model and also gives results closer to it. Anyway, you should try every model yourself to see which one works best for you. Just downloading these GGUF models isn't enough. We need another important file to make them work, which is called mmproj. Let's see where we can download it. Let's open this link in the browser. Here we go. This is the file we need for the text encoders that come in GGUF formats. Use the download button to get it. After that, we need the VAE file. If you've already used the QN image model, you might have this one. If not, let's see where we can download it. Let's open this link in the browser. So this is the file we need to download, which is QN image VAE SAFA tensors. Use the download button to get it. And if you want to speed up the generation, you can use the lightning LoRa's made for QN image. Let's see where we can get them. Let's open this link in the browser. Here, we can find the four-step LoRa's and also the eight-step LoRa's, which I've already talked about in another video. Later in this video, I will show you how to use the LoRa's. Okay, that's it. We now have enough files to use QN Image Edit. Let's see where we need to put the files inside Comfy UI. Some of you already know the locations for placing the files. However, I want to make sure newcomers don't get confused. Here, I've opened my downloads folder. Here I have the downloaded files and a portable version of Comfy UI. So first, let's move the QN image edit models to Comfy UI. Let's select both the GGUF and FP8 models of QN image edit and cut the files. Then open the Comfy UI models folder. Find and open the folder called diffusion models. Then paste the files. After that, go back to the downloads folder. Now let's select the text encoders. One is FP8 and the other is in GGUF format. As I said before, to make the GGUF format work, we need the mmproj file. So let's select the mmproj, which is named QN2.5VL7B instructmmprojbf16.gguf. Cut the files, then open the Comfy UI models folder. Then open the text encoders folder again and paste the files. After that, go back to the downloads folder. Let's select the VAE file and cut it then open the Comfy UI Models folder again. Find and open the folder called VAE and paste the file there. Then, let's go back to the Downloads folder. Let's select and cut both the 4-step LoRa and 8-step LoRa. Then, open the Comfy UI Models folder again. Find and open the folder called LoRa's and paste the files. That's it, next, launch Comfy UI. I've already done it, so let's switch to Comfy UI. First, 
Let's refresh Comfy UI by pressing R on the keyboard. If your Comfy UI is already up to date, you'll get a template for using QN Image Edit. Let's open that template and start using it. First, click on the Comfy UI logo in the top left corner, then click on Browse Templates. After that, click on the Image section. Here, we can see a template named QN Image Edit, so let's click on it. Here we go. Now, let's take a look at the workflow and make some modifications. In the Load Diffusion Model node, the FP8 format of QN Image Edit is selected. If you're going to use the BF16 format, then select that one. I will be using the FP8 format. For Weight D-Type, I will use the default option. Now, let's go to the Load Clip node. Here, the FP8 scaled version of QN 2.5 VL7B is selected. If you want to use BF16, then select that one. There's no need to change the type and device. Next, let's go to the Load VAE node. We don't need to change anything here, just use the QN Image VAE SAFA tensors. Now, let's go to another node called Load Image. This is the node we'll use for importing images for editing. Let's select an image. Click on Choose File to Upload and let's choose this bike photo. Click Open. Now the image is imported. Now, let's move on to another node called Scale Image to Total Pixels. What this node does is resize your image to a specific megapixel size. In this case, it's one megapixel. This ensures the image has the right amount of detail and a consistent resolution, which helps the model process and edit it properly. Now, let's move on to the new prompt node made for QN Image Edit, the Text Encode QN Image Edit node. Here's what happens when you provide an image to this node. No matter how high resolution your image is, the node first scales it down to about one megapixel. That resized image is then passed to the text encoder along with your prompt. If a VAE is provided, it also encodes the image into latent space. Finally, the text prompt. The visual information and the latent representation are combined into conditioning for the QN image edit model. In the top prompt, which is the positive prompt, type what you want the model to do with the imported image. In the negative prompt, type what you don't want the model to do in the image. There is also a node that is in bypass mode, which is the LoRa loader model only node, used for loading LoRas. If you want to use the lightning LoRas, unbypass the node, and then you can start using the LoRas. Don't worry, later I will show you how to use the lightning LoRas. So, let's move on to the model sampling aura flow node. I will change the shift value from 3 to 4. For CFG norm, I will use 1.0. In the K sampler, I'm going to use the 20 steps that come with this workflow, and I will use a CFG value of 4.0. The sampler I will use is Euler, and the scheduler I'm going to use is simple. Now we're ready to start editing the photo. Here's what I'm going to do with the image. I'm going to remove the bike, keeping only the person sitting on it. So, in the positive prompt, I'll type, remove the bike from the image while keeping the man. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at the generated image. Let's open this image in a new tab. As you can see, the bike is removed while keeping the man in the photo. There are some minor issues, but overall it is a nice result. If we compare the image with the original one, we can see the differences. Now, let's close this and edit another image. I will choose this woman's photo. Let's click open. Now, here is what I am going to do. I am going to remove all the persons except the woman in the white dress. So in the positive prompt, let's type, Keep the woman in white dress and remove all the other persons in this image. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at the generated image. As we can see, every person except the woman in the white dress has been removed. So what if we want to edit this generated image? For that, there is a node available in Comfy UI. Let's use that. Let's close this tab. What we need to do is remove the current load image node. Then, double-click and search for Load Image from Outputs. Here it is, let's click on it. As we can see here, the node loaded the current generated image. If you don't see the last generated image, then click on the Refresh button. Now, let's connect the image output of Load Image from Outputs to the image input of Scale Image to Total Pixels. This time, I'm going to change her clothes. So, let's type it in the positive prompt. Change her cloth to black t-shirt and white skirt. Then, Let's run the workflow and see the result. Again, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at the image. As we can see, her clothes are changed, and as always, it is a pretty good result. 
If we want to edit this generated image, I mean the last generated image, just click the refresh button on the load image from outputs node. Now let's edit another image. Let's choose this photo. This time I'm going to change her background. Let's type, change the background to city landscape. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go again. Let's take a look at the image. Let's open the image in a new tab. Overall, the image looks fine, but there are some minor issues with her hands and also around her eyes. If we compare the generated image with the original, you can spot the differences. Anyway, let's move on to another image editing task. For example, we can change the time and season of an image. Let's see that. So let's open another image. This time, I am going to change the image from day to night. So here is what I am going to type in the positive prompt. Transform this image from day to night Add street lights. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, the image looks like it was taken at night, and we also have street lights. Overall, it's a fine looking image. Now, let's change the season of the original photo. In the positive prompt, I'll type change the season to rainy season, add reflection of the bike on the road. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at the photo. As we can see, the image looks good, and there is also a good reflection on the road, but I think the falling rain particles look a little artificial. It looks like we've done a lot of editing tasks, so let's see if the model can do photo retouching. Let's open another image. In this photo, we can see there are a lot of freckles on her face. Let's remove them. So in the positive prompt, let's type, Remove freckles and moles, make her face look smooth while keeping facial structure. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. As we can see, the generation is pretty nice. I did not find any issues at first look. If we compare the generated image with the original, we can see that the model did a pretty good job in this case. Now, what if we want to transform the image into various art styles? For example, let's transform the loaded image to Ghibli art style. So, in the positive prompt, type, transform this image into Ghibli art style. Let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. Well, like before, the generation also looks good. So, if you want other art styles, just type, transform this image into, and then type the name of the art style you want. Also, we can turn paintings into photorealistic images. So, let's try that. Let's select another image of a painting. Let's select this one and click open. Now in the positive prompt, let's type, transform this photo into realistic photograph taken from today camera. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. And here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at the image. Well, overall the image looks fine, but if we compare the generated image with the original painting, I think the face looks different and her eyes also moved. However, the clothes and other things she's wearing look similar, I think. And let's move on to another task. Can this model restore old photos? Let's try that. Let's open another image of an old photograph. If we open the image in a new tab, you can see that this old photo is in really bad condition. Let's try to restore it. For restoring this image, I wrote a prompt using chat GPT. Let's copy and use it in the positive prompt. So, let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. Although the photo was restored, if we compare it with the original image, I think there are some problems. In the original image, he was looking to the left, but in the generated image, he is looking straight at the camera. And there are also some facial structure differences. Now, let's move on to the text editing capabilities of QN Image Edit. Let's add text to the currently generated image. Let's click on the refresh button of load image from outputs. So in the positive prompt, let's type, add cover on the top of this image, make it look like a magazine cover. Let's change the word cover to uppercase letters. As you can see from the prompt, when we want to add, remove, or replace text, we need to put that text in single or double quotes. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here is the result. Well, the text looks good. Let's try to remove text from an image. So let's import another image. This is a magazine cover. What about removing the text city from the image? So for that type, remove the text city from the image. Again, as you can see, the text is inside double quotes. You can also use single quotes. If we want to remove all the texts, we can type remove all the text from the image. Anyway, I'm going to skip the generation 
And what about replacing texts? So let's open another image. In this image, we are going to replace the text health with planet. For that, let's type change the text from health to planet. Now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here is the result. As you can see, health has been changed to planet. This is a really nice result, especially when looking at the letter T. I think it has some natural looking blur. Yes, it does have some minor issues. Guys, we are just using the FP8 models. Maybe the full model will produce higher quality images. Now let's try to create a product advertisement. So let's choose another photo. I am going to use this photo of a camera. For the advertisement, I made a prompt using chat GPT. So let's copy that and paste it in the positive prompt. Now let's run the workflow and wait for the result. And here is the result. Well, let's take a look at the generated image. As we can see, the text alignment is not good, but the camera looks similar to the original with some minor issues with the text on the lens. Okay, let's see if this model can remove watermarks from images. So let's open another image. Here, there are a lot of texts and some digital overlays. So let's try to remove them. In the positive prompt, let's type, remove all text, watermarks, logos, and digital overlays. And now let's run the workflow and see the result. Here is the result. Well, let's take a look at the image. Although the watermarks are removed, the image looks somewhat similar to the original. If we compare it with the original, we can see the differences. Okay, guys, that's enough with editing. Let's take a look at the generation speed of QN Image Edit. Well, for me, the generation time varies from 5 to 8 minutes, and that is pretty slow when comparing it with the Flux.1 context model. To speed up the generation, we can use the QN Image Lightning LoRa's. Let's see how to use them. So, in this workflow, let's unbypass the node called LoRa Loader Model only by pressing Ctrl plus B. In the LoRa Name field, choose the LoRa you want to use. If we are using the four-step LoRa, then we only need four steps in the K sampler and a CFG value of 1.0. And in case you are using the eight-step LoRa, use eight steps in the K sampler and a CFG value of 1.0. So let's check the speed of the eight-step LoRa. I'm going to choose another photo. In the positive prompt, I am going to type, remove the bike from the image. Let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. As we can see, the bike and the person were removed from the image. Now, let's look at the generation speed. So, this time, the generation time is around 3.5 minutes, which is a really great improvement when comparing it with previous generations. If we use the four-step LoRa, the generation speed will be even faster. Anyway, now let's see how we can use the GGuf models. First, let's select and delete both the load diffusion model and the load clip nodes. Then, double-click and search for Unet Loader GGuf. Click on it. In the Unet name, select the GGuf model of QN Image Edit you want to use. Then, connect the model output to the LoRa Loader Model Only node. Then, let's add another node for loading the text encoder. So, double-click and search for Clip Loader GGuf. Here it is. Let's click on it. In the clip name, select the GGuf model of the text encoder. In my case, it is QN 2.5 VL7B Instruct Q6K. Then, change the type from Stable Diffusion to QN Image. Then, connect the clip output of Clip Loader GGuf to the clip input of both the positive and negative prompts. Now, let's run the workflow and see how the GGuf models perform. And here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. As you can see, the GGuf models did a pretty good job. Now, guys, make sure your custom node pack that provides support for GGuf models is up to date. So, use the Comfy UI Manager to update. In my case, I am using the latest 1.1.4 version of the Comfy UI GGuf custom node pack, which recently added support for loading the text encoder. And guys, that's it. Use QN Image Edit Yourself and use your imagination for different kinds of edits. Thanks for watching. See you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.